Hello and in today's STM32 programming we are going to be covering the timer with interrupts. So firstly what we do is we go to our timer 3 that we set up in the previous video and we just make the adjustments to make it 75 minus 1 for our prescaler. Our counterclock period is going to be 1000 and we set back the division to no division so this will give us if we have a 75 megahertz clock this will give us a division of 75 then we divide 1 by 1 million which will give us 1 microsecond so for a overflow let me just check our clock configuration everything looks to be correct here so we just save and let it generate so something i forgot we need to enable the nested vector interrupt controller for timer 3 so we just simply click this enable box so let's just save and regenerate then we just go to our project and we delete our the main and that's about it for that and we have our timer hole so just quickly create a basic class for that and we inherit our base class as public and we rename this to timer it so this will be our timer interrupt class takes in the same parameters as our timer interrupt so firstly we include our interrupt class for our isr hole then we add a protected static here and our protected static is going to be an interrupt of the current class and we just call it our standard isr list okay then we create a variable that is going to be a unsigned int 64 underscore t and we are just going to say underscore tick as its name so now let's build our constructor so we copy our two constructor and destructor at the namespace and let's set up our variables so it's going to be our timer base and it's going to be our underscore tick and that's going to be constructed with zero and our timer base is simply going to take our instance and it's going to take our handle and then in our constructor we add our isr so the current object as an isr and then we have our isr list and this is going to remove the current isr now we need to configure our project so that will be in our includes and then the whole config.h and we just scroll down here then we want our adc to enable whole callbacks or ur to enable whole callbacks and then our timer register to enable custom whole callbacks let's just quickly compile that and see what it does okay so it's complaining about the usart one it's going to be have to be that one and that one and it's just giving us warnings of unused variables that's excellent okay so we're correctly configured then we need to take our timer callback go to our hold.h and then we say hash if i'm actually just going to paste that in here and then i'm going to copy from one of our previous projects our if error so we copy that and we copy that and that is our error state and then we go look at our timer hole handle and then we can see all the callbacks over here now the one we want is the period elapsed callback so that will be a copy of that let's just see if it's in this function yes it is so we can copy this function and just paste it in our private variables and make it static so that it's for all the timers and we can just call it period elapsed go back to actually let's just copy that front piece and then we go back to our hole so it will be period elapse so we go back to our constructor and we say period elapse but our our handle will set the period elapsed callback equivalent to period elapsed add a comma point there and then we add this callback to the top and just give it the name of our class and we need to add our static isr timer so this variable we need to declare it in our c file as well okay now we have a callback for our interrupt and a variable to store our ticks 
and a variable to store the callback set in our internal class to handle the elapsed. Every time the timer overflows, it will call this function. Let's just quickly compile that. Just make sure everything is hunky dory. Yes, it's just complaining about unused variables. And then we're going to override the reset and read functions. So this one also needs to be virtual. So reset and read will be public. And these both will be overrides. And this one will return a int 64. And we need to add override at the end. Not explicitly necessary, it's just good code practice to add the overrides. Let's just double check the compilation. Uh, conflicting return type specifier for virtual. Okay, so this will not be virtual. It will be a function overload. Okay, so we have a function overload now. The first one we create is reset. And this is very simple. And we say our tick variable is equals to zero. And our read is going to be this and it is going to uh, return our tick variable and then we create a private function which is going to be void tick and void let's just move these functions to their correct place and we create the tick function it's simply going to do tick plus plus now we add this simple function to loop through the to the ticks so it's just going to loop through all the handles in the irsr list if the current handle is equivalent to the past in handle then we execute the tick for that particular class or object so we have tick and then we're going to add another function which is going to be bool delay underscore ms and that's going to take in a un64 it's going to be start underscore time and it's going to be un64 delay time and then we just copy that and it does our final function and this is simply going to do a return and we say read minus the start time is greater or equals to the delay time and then we can create the delay based on that and then we need to create two more functions for our start and our stop and these are both going to be overrides of the base class so we can simply just grab the start and stop from our base class add them in here and then we go look at our definition and then we can see here non-blocking mode interrupt and then we can say it's called start it and stop it and we just add underscore it over here and then we quickly compile again just to make sure everything works build might be incomplete oh it's the wrong class we just quickly build and see everything happily builds great stuff and that should be our timer interrupt class let's just do some formatting over here and we can save just build for sanity's sake again okay that's fine let me just see where our timer is instantiated and we just call that timer it and we got our read over here we can move let's see our tick ms now is a un32 so we can actually delete all of this and we make this a un64 comment this out for now and we can see this delay ms and we take our previous tick and we say a thousand milliseconds let me just think here okay so i want this as a fixed delay for now we take our tick ms previous so our previous will be instantiated to zero and then our tick ms will get overwritten every time we read again so this will give us a one second delay between the leds in theory so let's flash the stm32 error exists let's see what the error is uh, i need to give it its object that it's actually working from let's build again five warnings that's fine and we flash the stm32 and nothing's happening on the stm32 so let's start debugging and we step into step over okay great stuff okay so we do initialize next one is to check the start 
Okay, start. We step into and we step into. Let's see if we return all okay. Yes, we do return all okay. Alright, so we have started. Let's see what happens over here. The game as previous is a massive amount. Okay, step into. Let's see what this evaluates to. Expressions, add new expression. Let's see what that evaluates to false. Okay, so somehow this evaluates to the wrong value. Okay, so it's variables. Pick as previous. Okay, step over. Let's see, ticker is a not useful variable. Turn, let's see, previous is zero. Let's see this value. We move this around and then we terminate and relaunch. Let's just place a breakpoint at our tick increment just to see that that actually happens. Yes, that does actually happen. So tick does increase. Yeah, so tick does actually increase. Let's see if something happens if I let it go again. Remove the breakpoints. Let's see, ticker is always zero. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So this needs to be ticker plus plus here. And then we relaunch relaunch let's see what happens ticker is one okay now we got something that actually works let's switch to the camera and now you can see the tick increasing we can get our c0 for our variable delay and we can plug that into our timer delay and then we can simply just flash and then we can swap to our camera which here you can see the led is going crazy because we probably have a very low delay there. So what we do is, let me just see here. And then we can make adjustments according to the delay. I apparently have the wrong one on my hands. And we can make it super slow as well. So we can now see that the delay is actually very high. So I think I will add an additional print out and we make that once a second. So we're going to reuse this, but instead of printing out the delay, the current tick of the timer, we are going to print out the length of the delay. So the delay over here, and then we get T0 as our value. Uh, let me just switch back to main and just show you what I did. So I just took the print function over here and then added the delay over here. So it's going to print once a second what the delay is. Oh, it's what it's supposed to be doing and not what it's showing up top. So something is clearly broken with my print statement. Print delay. So let's just debug that. And now suddenly it works. Fantastic. The delay on the UC. So we just run that so that we know what the delay should be approximately on the LEDs in milliseconds. And then it fixed itself. Okay. So the delay should be around about three seconds. Let me just reset the terminal. Okay. So the delay is around about three seconds. You can observe it for yourself. Now, if I lower the value, let's say two seconds. You can see that the LEDs slowly start to increment faster and faster. So that's about one second or so delay. Half a second, that's 70 milliseconds. So it's just adjusted. It gets very finicky at the lower end. Now you can add additional code to make it a better filter. You can see that's about 200 milliseconds and then zero delay. It's hovering because I'm close to the limit and there's a zero delay. And then we add some delay and that's how to use the timer interrupt as well as having a variable delay on a STM32. A like, share, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.